Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Um, had a few queries and questions and um, requests, I suppose, uh, over the last couple of days about why don't I paint with my traditional watercolours anymore? Um, or to put it another way, wouldn't people, would people like to see uh, some paintings done with my traditional watercolours again, like I used to at the beginning? Remember, we've got 700 videos um, on YouTube at the moment. And quite a lot of them were done um, quite a long time ago now, two to three years. And uh, if you look at those ones, you'll see me using my traditional watercolours. And I use them in a somewhat non-traditional way, which um, I'm going to talk about today. Do you like my sponge? Natural, real sea sponge. Sort of thing that you can tear pieces off of in order to paint lovely autumn trees. This is a piece. It has been used in that way and uh, you can see it's a little bit grubby because it's been used, you know, to stomp, stomp, stomp onto the paper. Um, that's a tip for painting leaves. It's much quicker than painting them all individually. Uh, so, right, this is my system. Um, I don't know of anyone else who uses, no, I don't know of anyone else who used this system before I kind of popularised it on YouTube. Um, but that's not to say it's my system. These, uh, excuse the pigeons mating on the roof, these little dishes were given to me by a friend who um, used to use them for his classes. And they're all handmade little dishes, but you can buy something similar to this. I'll put a link in the description below on Amazon. You can, they're sort of like um, sushi dipping dishes. And that kind of thing. You can get them quite inexpensively. They're not quite so fancy. Uh, sorry, these aren't quite so fancy as that. Or you can get a set of nesting ones. Um, this is one of them. I don't know where the others have gone, but they, they fit together in a little stack. Um, and I think John Jack, Jack Richardson do those. And then the other one I use sometimes is these ones. These are little Pyrex dishes. Um, you sometimes find these on um, in cafes for things like condiments. I think first ones of these that I got, I stole from a cafe that had sugar, was serving up individual sugar portions for some reason. I don't remember why. And I thought, oh, I want one of those. So I stole it. I expect I'll go to hell now. Um, so I've got all of these. I'm going to just take those out. And um, you don't need this many. I'm just showing off, you know, uh, lots and lots of blank ones. So what I'm going to do now, and these are ones that I've got paint in, and you can, I keep them in a basket. And if I just want to grab a quick, you know, dash of Windsor Violet, I can just pick that one up. Um, that one's turquoise. This is um, quinacridone gold. That's black. This is sap green, Windsor green, or something like that. Cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt umber, glycerin crimson, uh, burnt sienna, ultramarine, olive green, uh, hooker's green. Because green. So, um, when I start to set up in the morning, if I'm going to use this system, I can say, okay, I'm going to use uh, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, quinacridone gold. olive green and maybe possibly cadmium yellow. This is an autumn palette. So then I say to myself, well, yes, but you know, I haven't got enough paint on those, uh, in those dishes. So put those away. Sorry about the noise. I'm sure it sounds awful on the camera. And then I go to my,
my paint set and I've actually got a few in here which I selected out as being the ones I'm most likely to use and so I keep those a little bit separate but my basic um, supplies are in this tray. I find this very useful. This is um, a divider that goes inside this tray. These are called grapnel trays and they're made for schools and as you know we used to run a a little um, after-school tuition centre and we had these grapnel trays in great quantities and that's where I store most of my art supplies and art that I have produced. So this is a really good system and I've got this divided into groups of colours. So this is my browns, reddish browns, oranges and yellows. I've got my tube of buff titanium here which I just recently bought from Daniel Smith. So I'm going to probably put that out and I might use that today too. They do tend to get a bit muddled up. That's quinacridone gold. So I have, um, yeah, they've got a bit muddled up. So basically this is the greens, this is the browns, this is the yellows, but there's an overlap here because it's hard to say where yellow ochre stops being um, yellow and starts being brown and raw sienna is particularly on the edge between those two. Then in here I've got my blacks and whites and greys and neutral tints and things like that. This is where the reds are. I haven't tidied this up recently. This is a, it's not red is it? That's a green I think. Belongs in there. This is a blue. Um, and yeah the blues are here and I, I carry uh, a range of blues. Let's say, for example, we've got French ultramarine, Windsor blue. Uh, this is a Cotman color, uh, ultramarine, Cotman phthalo blue. Nothing wrong with Cotman. I bought these um, the Cotman paints, especially this one, when I was on holiday in Spain, and it was the only one I could get. They didn't have anything else. Uh, that's another tube of French ultramarine, but I think that one's gone hard. The only way I would be able to get that out to use it would be to cut the tube open. It's got it's dried up completely. Cut it open and um, put it in a pan and dilute it with a bit of water. This is a good make that I use, um, Old Holland. That's a European brand, Ultramarine Blue Deep, that one, that's quite nice. Um, manganese, this is De La Rowney. I'm not even sure if you can still buy De La Rowney, but this is an artist watercolour extra fine. I think you can. Um, these are all European. Um, manganese blue, I think that one might have dried out a bit. Some of these were gifted to me by someone who had given up painting when we were living in Exeter. There's a blue and this is a violet, dioxazine violet, Cotman. This is amazing really because this paint is very old. I've had this I don't know how long. You'll notice that the tubes are different nowadays, but it's still soft inside this tube. So I'll still be able to use that. And I don't know whether to put that with the blues or with the reds, really, because it's somewhere in between. So I can live there for a minute. Um, I could go through all of these and talk about them and say something about all of them, but that would probably be completely boring to most people. Here's a tube of uh, De La Rowney um, artists olive green which is almost empty and I suppose what I'm doing here I'm showing you one of the reasons why I have moved away from the traditional paints that I was using is because I'm basically running out of them and I've got lots of tubes like this which are almost empty and there's nothing quite so frustrating as to open a tube like that especially when your fingers are getting a little bit past their sell by date and you have to really struggle I can feel that doing things to my inner workings that really I don't want to have happen. And I know there are ways and means of getting the last dregs of paint out, um, but you don't always want to do that, do you? That actually hurt my arm squeezing that. So you'll have to forgive me if sometimes I say no, because I can't, as I'm saying, I'm going to have another rant. I can't buy this anymore. If I buy Winsor & Newton, artist's paint. It's not made in England anymore. It isn't. It's made in China. Cotman 
is made in France. For Windsor and Newton, excuse me? I mean, I'm shrugging my shoulders here and screwing up my face and going, what? What? What am I supposed to do? When this is gone, it's gone. So, you know, and it looks like I've got a lot of greens here, but I haven't got another olive green. This one's also dried out. That's a Windsor and Newton. That's this is probably 30 years old. It's really, you know. Um, and in my box over here, last year, no, year before last, I went to um, um, the website of Old Holland. I looked at Sennelier. I looked at uh, Schminke. I looked at Old Holland. I looked at uh, My Merry Blue. I looked at all the European um, manufacturers. And the only one that I could find feel was offering value for money for me here in France it wasn't Sennelier I don't like that paint because it's got honey in it and I'm not a vegan I don't disapprove of the use of honey but I live in a very humid climate so um, the honey it it uh, encourages mold and my paints go moldy and I'm allergic to mold so I don't want to encourage that I mean it's not going to kill me but it's not something I want to encourage Anyway, so in the end, I like Schmincke, but some of their colours are a bit dodgy. And I, I used to be a great fan of theirs, and I have a paint box of theirs here somewhere. I'll show you. Uh, this one. This is a Schmincke paint box, and it's got all my reds and yellows in it now. Um, but I've had this tin for absolutely eons. Um, I bought it in in Germany, in Meersburg, in southern Germany, uh, in about 1989, um, when I started studying art in Germany. I was living there for a while. And so this, is, this has got sentimental... I very rarely keep boxes, uh, but I kept that one, and I've kept the tin, and I've got a few of their paints, but... Um, the best value for money that I could find for me in Europe a couple of years ago was the Old Holland. So I bought a few of those and they're very good. There's lovely bright turquoise blue, this Caribbean blue. Um, and uh, oh, this is uh, Schmincke Burnt Sienna. That's, that's not as good. The Schmincke Burnt Sienna isn't as good as my old tubes of um, Windsor & Newton Burnt Sienna, which I think is a lovely colour. I don't know, whoops, I don't know if it's still as good as it used to be. Um, and I don't even know if I've got any. Have I? I don't know. That's going to go in there anyway. So sometimes when I look at these paints, you know what? They've got so many attachments for me. You know, I pick up a tube of De La Rowney and I'm thinking about Canada because that's where I have just remembered. That's where I bought my De La Rowney all those years ago. I think you'll find it's marked in um, dollars somewhere. Um, and here's the thing. When you've lived a few years and you have things like this, they have a kind of um, aura about them. They have a sort of effect on you and when you pick them up you think oh and you remember something don't you you remember where you bought it who you used it with uh, what you used it for and suddenly for me anyway that blocks me because I start to think about the past and it's all very well thinking about the past and having a past but when your past is bigger than your future like it is for so many of us um could be for all of us for all we know because we don't know that we're going to wake up tomorrow do we I had a friend who um, died of an embolism when she was about 23 boom gone that's always stayed with me that um so yes don't take anything for granted so this blocks me so that's why friends I when I came across this 
not that one. That was a little bit later. But when I, somebody, one of you kind people recommended the Kuretake paints and I was intrigued. So I ordered a set. And when I started to use them, I was liberated. Liberated from the chains and shackles which inhibit me and are attached between me and these tubes of paints. This is the Art Nouveau set, which is equally liberating. I haven't really thought about it before, but talking to you this morning like this, I've realized what it was that made those paints so um, powerful for me because they literally took away all of this, all of these remnants of past paintings, failed and succeeding, things I've tried to sell, things I've I tried to start an Etsy shop and sell things on there. I tried to run an eBay um, shop and sold things on there. Ended up practically giving most of them away. I've tried to have a gallery in my house. I've opened, um, uh, I've tried to deal with other galleries. I've had my paintings hanging in gallery shops in England and in uh, Canada. I've exhibited in, the Bermuda, in Bermuda, in the Bahamas. Trying, I sold really well in the Bahamas, which gave, no, sorry, in Bermuda, which gave me a really big boost. We had an exhibition, a joint exhibition there, and I put in seven paintings. And uh, <laughs> I didn't go to the opening night because I was so fed up, I thought I'm never going to sell anything. And a friend of mine who, I had some really good friends when I was living in Bermuda, a friend phoned me that night and she said, all your paintings have got red dots on them. They've all been sold. And I said, What? You're joking, you're pulling my leg. She said, no, I'm not. All your paintings have been sold. And I said, I don't believe you. You're, you're, you're seriously, are you, are, you, are you, what? How can that possibly be? There must be a mistake. And she said, no, they're all sold. They're all sold, you have to come tomorrow and have a look because they've all been sold. And they had. Every single damn one of them. And they were $250, $500. And, and I'm like, I don't believe this. Bermuda was a great place to be an artist at, at that time. Um, anyway, what am I rambling on about now? So I've moved them all out of here and I put them into their home. Um, that's a kind of traveling case. But that's the thing, you see, all these memories come to mind when I start to look at these paints and that's why I struggle to use them. But because I'm such a wonderful person, I'm going to have a go at using some of them today. So I'm going to squeeze out some of this one, which has no memories attached, because this is Daniel Smith's Extra Fine Buff Titanium. I don't know whether I've explained myself very well. I, I don't listen to myself while I'm talking. I just talk. And um, so if I've, if I've talked a lot of rubbish, I'm sorry. I take it all back. Um, some people have talked to me about Rosa paints and saying how wonderful they are. Um, I've only got one tube of Rosa, and this is Rosa Quinacridone Gold. I believe they come from the Ukraine. I'm not sure about this. It doesn't look like my idea of Quinacridone Gold, but I'm going to use it today. So I've put a blob of that out there. And the main reason for choosing that is because I can't find the other ones. Uh, that's another thing that's a problem with this setup, because, you know, it's like... I've got them organized, but not organized enough. This is going to be burnt sienna, and that I can find. We've got some De La Rowney there. And that's another thing. You don't have to worry about mixing these watercolor paints together, because no matter who makes them, oh, there's the Pinacridone Gold. It doesn't matter who makes them, they are all uh, compatible to mix with one another. That's a Daniel Smith, I think, yes. Daniel Smith Quinacridone Gold, Rosa Quinacridone Gold. Look. Daniel Smith, Rosa. Daniel Smith. It's not a bad colour but it's not the same. <laughs> so those two could quite easily be in anyone's armory and you could use those two 
and you would not want to call them the same. Would you call those two the same colour? Daniel Smith, Quinacridone and Gold, and Rosa, Quinacridone and Gold. Um, so, so far we have got um, Yellow Ochre, Quinacridone and Gold, Burnt Sienna, win uh, Olive Green, and um, uh, tit Buff Titanium. And for the darks for this painting, I'm going to use black because you can mix black to anything to make it darker. Uh, I was going to use indigo, but then I thought, no, there's no point really because I can make indigo from um, intense black. That's another old Holland color uh, and, and blue. So, um, and similarly, I was going to use sepia, but two reasons, this dried out a bit it's also um, just a mixture of basically burnt sienna and black. That will give me sepia, so I don't need to squeeze that out either. And one final colour, what was I going to say? Blue, that's it. Um, various different blues you could use, but why don't I just go for the one on top, which is thalo blue. It would either be thalo or... Um, connect, or um, da, 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 ultramarine. Ultramarine is a granulating colour. Most of these aren't, so I'm going to go for phthalo blue, which is not granulating colour. So there we are. Um, let's get this out of the way for a minute and put that back in the drawer here. I'm just going to paint a few autumn flowers just as a sort of uh, have a little play kind of thing. Um, just mention while I've got it in my hand, this is a nice little sketchbook from um, Viviva. They've got a new um, palette coming out soon. I'll give you a sneak peek. I'm going to be painting with this in a couple of days when I do the autumn landscape. Um, if I can get this out. Um, I think it's being released on the 24th or something. Anyway, soon. Um, if you go to their website, you'll find it. You could probably put your name down for one. Their little colour sheets, which are really nice if you're painting on the go. Um, and the colours are actually really, really nice. Um, I painted this little sketch last night, just trying out, basically copying somebody else's painting to learn a few new techniques. Um, but they're lovely and bright, aren't they? And this is basically Viviva colours, so can't argue with that. Okay, so long preamble over and uh, I'm going to settle down now with, I've got a size 8 Princeton Aqua Elite here, uh, which is quite a nice brush, um, but any brush would do. And I'm going to paint basically some slightly autumnally inspired painting uh, flowers and uh, I don't know, we'll just see what happens. So start off by picking up a bit of, I'm just playing. I don't have anything in mind at all. Um, so I'm just picking up some of this Rosa Quinacridone gold, and I'm just going to pop in five or six loose petals. And then something that I often do, and I don't know if it's a good idea or not, is I just don't wash my brush in between, and I just go ahead and pick up another color. And uh, maybe we'll paint another flower here and I'm not looking for realism at all I'm not looking for anything actually I'm just watching see that's interesting because it's quite a lot of you can see the brush marks can't you that's interesting you can see the texture there and we'll just put in some black for the center and leave a little bit of white perhaps for the highlights on the center we'll do the same on that one this one, because it's a little bit wetter, is going to sort of splay out a little bit. And I'm not going to wash the brush, but I'll just pick up a little bit more um, colour and a little bit of water um, in the for the green. And I'm going to put in a really dark uh, couple of leaves here. And if you can, if you can control the brush enough to leave a sort of... Um, center vein, some lighter area down the middle of the leaf. That's a, that's a good idea if you can do that. It's not always possible. And as you go along, your paint will dilute a little bit. You can put a little bit more yellow in it to make a slightly different color. Slightly different green, and then you can put another one 
next to the ones you've already done. And just kind of make it up as you go along. I know a lot of you ladies have got um, a lot of skill when it comes to colour and design and just because, you know, we're not all brilliant artists and the rest of it. It doesn't mean we don't have an understanding. I think it's rather patronising, actually, to assume that nobody knows anything about colour just because they haven't painted in watercolour before. Because I guarantee that most of the women who watch me have done interior design and have made quilts. They've dressed their children to look decent until they outgrew the influence of their mothers um, and so on. So, you know... Most of us have got some clue what colour is and how to use it. You know that you, you put darks with lights and then you can um, use the contrast to make things look good. Let's go to, um, this is up here, I have uh, yellow ochre. Let's put a yellow ochre flower over here. Use a bit more water to make it a little bit lighter. Yellow ochre is uh, not an interesting colour really, but if you put a nice um, contrast with it. Oh, that's an interesting green, isn't it? I don't think we'll use that. It's too blue, too turquoisey. Just wash that off. Um, what should we do next? Um, maybe add a little bit of blue to the green. Yeah, that's quite nice. Uh, phthalo blue is quite strong. So when you add that to olive green, you're going to get, you know, a much bluer colour, but it's quite nice. Don't worry if things run. doesn't matter and you can always make um, everything darker with black just add some black that will run nicely because it's still damp I'm going to put some more leaves down here and try the uh, Rosa Quinacridone Gold with some of that greeny blue colour and see what happens there. Oh, look, we've got a nice, nice olive again. Add a bit more water, make it runnier. And maybe, maybe I'll come in here with some oil. Yeah, let that run. Up here, perhaps. You could easily end up painting a black background for this painting because it's sort of autumnal, isn't it? So you're thinking autumn colours. And... Let's have another stem up here. I just like doing these leaves. And maybe... A chrysanthemum type of thing with a nice black centre. You can use the black to do the veins in the middle of the leaves if you want. Make them broken, don't, don't make them too solid. But they do improve the whole look, especially if you keep them kind of looking a little bit painterly.
nice black one there. And um, let's put a nice mixture here. This is just everything I had on my brush there. And I'm going to do something else with it over here, do a different shape. the stem in black. Okay, a bit more of this. I haven't used much of my, um, I'm going to now. Let's put a nice, ooh, it looks like, uh, Caramel or something, doesn't it? Put one up here. Don't forget to have some of the paint, some of the flowers paint, uh, painted to face to the left. You know, sort of half, half a flower. And if you use this buff titanium, you can basically turn any of your colours into a sort of um, uh, a bit like the, um, you know, um, oh, Art Nouveau colours, sort of somewhat opaque-ish. I think we want a bit more of this bright burnt sienna down here. Let's put some burnt sienna in the middle of that one and maybe here and a bit of black in there. Gives it a bit more contrast, maybe a bit more in here. Oh, look at that. This paper is really nice. It's nice and smooth. I want to put some orangey leaves in here and this is where I remind myself not to be afraid to let the paint go over the one that's underneath. So forming a kind of background. Pick up a bit of yellow and try that with some of that Oh, that's an interesting colour. That's a bit different. Maybe make this one a bit bigger. And now I'm going to put in some, just to fill in some of these spaces, we put in some berries. Put some black in the center of that one. A bit more black there. And put some here and here. I like painting with black. I think it's fun. If you find it hard to do the little uh, veins with the brush, although you won't find it as hard if you get one of these fine 
pointed brushes. Where now's come out in November if you want to buy the craft mo brushes that I've designed. Um, I'm hoping that if they live up to their promises, the brushes will have a very nice point. Samples I've got definitely have. And I might come in in a minute once it's dry, perhaps uh, with a bit of white and put some white highlights in. I'm just going to improve this one because it's a little bit, what's the word? Deformed. Faint. Um, maybe a little bit more color on this one too. Okay. And if you feel that you've got too much white in the background, you can just come in with a bit of something like the Royal Sienna and uh, or Yellow Ochre. And oh, I forgot this one here. I quite like that um, Rosa paint. It's a completely different experience from the normal quinacridone gold, but nothing wrong with it. It's quite interesting. I'm just putting in a little bit of yellow in the center here to just cover up some of the white. Probably should wait for it to dry before you do that really, but Okay, so I think I'm going to probably call that day and let that dry. And it's the kind of painting where you might come in later and think, oh, I should use a bit of um, line work with a, um, you know, with a pen or something like that. But I'll see what happens once it's dry. So there we are. There's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed that. I know it was just a quick one, just a relaxation thing for you to have fun with. And uh, now I suggest you go ahead and have a go at doing something like this yourself. And watch the video, of course, as many times as you like. Go over to our um, homepage on YouTube and uh, watch it from there if you possibly can and explore what we've got on there for you. And now I'm going to go outside, get some fresh air and uh, let's go and feed the dogs. So I'll see you again soon and bye for now. Bye, everybody. There's my beautiful girl. We groomed her yesterday and she is looking very, very posh and smart. Aren't you, Lottie? You're a good girl. Yes, you're my baby. Oh, you love me so much, don't you? And I love you too. Yes. Hello, Ben. You can't be left out. Oh. <laughs> I say goodbye. <laughs>